What's up everybody, this is Simon from Insider Divers and in this Lightroom tip of the day, we're talking about how to white balance your underwater photos in Lightroom Classic CC. We're gonna white balance in three easy steps. First, you're gonna use the white balance selector tool and do an auto white balance. Second, you're gonna do a fine tuning with the temperature and the tint and the same tool provided. And third will be color management in your HSL, hue, saturation, and luminance. Before we start editing, I wanna point out that you should always shoot in raw format. That is because in RAW you have much more editing options, where JPEG is like a finished loaf of bread, the RAW is much more like the ingredients of a bread, allowing you to make lots of different kinds of breads. In editing terms, that means that we have a lot more to play with, more brightness per pixel, and also more, more color per pixel, allowing us better editing. Here's a picture that I edited with RAW and applied the same eddings to a JPEG version of the same image, and you can see how the colors totally are not good looking and therefore you can see that the details in brightness and in color are not the same. Now let's go to the first step, auto white balance. First you need to go into your develop panel, it's highlighted above. Now open the basic segment of your editing and go to the first tool available. This is the auto white balance selector tool. Move this tool over different parts of the picture while looking at the RGB mentioned at the bottom of the square. What you're trying to do is find a neutral area where R, G, and B are roughly similar. Neutral colors like black, gray, and white have three almost identical RGBs. So search with the tool until you found three similar numbers and there you go, you've got a color balanced picture. The reds look red, pretty good anyway, and the blues look blue. So now let's go to the next segment. The next step is fine tuning your temperature and your tint. Your temperature essentially is the balance between blue and yellow and how much you want the color to lean towards blue and towards yellow. Tint is the same thing for greens and reds and you decide which way you want the color to be. Temperature and tint are the next sliders right below. These sliders essentially let you tune the blues, the reds and the greens. The temperature is blues and yellows and the tint is reds and greens. So when you're in the program, what you want to be doing is moving it ever so slightly up and down on both areas, trying to come to a neutral look for your whites. If there are no whites, look for grays and make them look natural. You want to move the sliders ever so slightly right and left to find that area. If you can't identify what a slider does, I recommend check the max. This is a technique that I use to find out what a slider does. Just move it to the extreme end first it gives you a sense of the direction when you're fine-tuning. So now we're coming to the final part. This third step in hue, saturation and luminance, we have a few more tweaks to do and then the picture is finished. In here we actually have again three things to look at. Hue, saturation and luminance. In here you're able to manipulate each color individually, which means you can decide what you do with your reds, your oranges, your yellows and so forth. So there are three different things and the first one we're going to look at is hue. Hue is the one where you decide which color in the spectrum you're leaning towards to. So for example, your greens and your blues have a mixed color in between that we call cyan or in Lightroom we call it aqua. So here you can decide if the aqua color is, should be more green or more blue. In our case, most of the time we want it to be blue because we want to create nice blue pictures. So let's open HSL. We've got hue, saturation and luminance as subdividers or you can look at all of them in one view. I find this a little bit too much information so I like to look at them individually. So we would first start with the blues and as I mentioned we don't like aqua. We want to make the blues blues so punch the aqua towards blue and it looks a lot better. Now I'm going to use a tool to define what my oranges look like and while holding this tool you can use the scroll button or the drag button to create more of a color change in the direction that you like. I would like these corals to look a bit redder so I'm pulling it slightly left. You can see it will adjust the proportions of each color component and adjust them so that this coral looks red. 
In the second part of HSL, you can choose what saturation each individual color can have. So you can decide if you want to have a bit more blue, or a bit more red, or maybe a little bit less of that annoying green that nobody likes. So these are little manipulations that you can do in the saturation slider. So let's look at the saturation of these colors. Blue obviously we want a bit more of, but maybe we want to do a little bit more of our reds and our oranges. So just look in detail and see by eye measure and individually tune these colors to your liking. Now the picture looks much better. The last step is luminance. In this part, you decide how bright or dark you want the individual colors to be. So if you want your reds to be brighter, you can do that. Or if you want your blues to be darker, you can do that as well. This allows you to do the final touch in terms of your color management and your white balance for your underwater photos. Okay, so now we've done this with a really easy picture which had very nice white balance to start with. So here are a couple of examples of how you can do a similar exercise with very different kind of photos. Here's a photo at depth with strobes, and you can see same process applies to get a great color photo. But now let's take another photo with no strobes where we have more white balance challenge. You can see finding a gray area on the turtle is quite easy actually. Now we've got a better color balance picture to start with, and with all the edits in the end we get a nice color balanced photo altogether. Seeing the before and after, you can see very much how the colors are coming back and the individual tuning has provided us with a nice color balance. But now to a photo from a compact camera taken of me in Sri Lanka. If I white balance on my forehead, you can see it's a great starting point for white balance to pictures. Skin is a great starting point for your color management, after which you can then do all the color edits to make a nice picture out of it. You can see here that now we've got good skin color and nice blue background. But I saved the best for last. White balancing shark photos is super easy. They have so many shades of gray on their body, so white balancing is extremely easy. You can see the belly of the shark is now super white. We fine tune a little bit more, but the rest we will do in HSL. So let's go to HSL. Here we of course make our blues blue, but now look at the magic trick. We can move the aqua slider down as well as the green, and you will see how the skin of the shark suddenly appears to be really gray, a lovely gray without any blue or green tinges at all. Comparing this to before and after, you can see what a big difference saturation and hue can make when you use HSL to white balance your shark photos. So that was it. White balancing your underwater photos in three simple steps using Lightroom Classic CC. If you enjoyed this, specific video, why don't you subscribe to our channel and look out for all the other cool underwater photography tips that we have in here.